if you want to disrupt an industry, cut the middleman. This lifestyle brand, now valued at $750 million, found a way to enter a noisy market by providing affordable home goods directly to its consumer in an untapped location. Let's dive into Made. Let's go. What's up, everyone? Sean Azar here. I'm with Matt Skopak. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 36, where we find businesses like made.com, where we dive into their marketing and business strategies, such that you can take these strategies and start implementing them into your business. Made.com, founded in 2010 10. by, I believe, that four, four founders. founders Ning, or four founders. Lee, uh, Ning Lee, Brent Haberman, Julian uh, Khalid and Choli McIntosh. So a little context, this brand, I'll tell you this, they did nothing really special. However, they entered in really in an untapped market, United, uh, in the UK, yep, right? In the UK. Where the furniture obviously business existed, but not in the internet space, really going for the DTC, where we always uh, discuss, right? I have worked with multiple brands, you know, Safa Via, Rugs USA, and so forth that are in this industry, but they're very focused on the US space, kind of based Safa Via in Europe, but not like this, how they've done it. Can't ship furniture world, worldwide, just yeah. doesn't work. So they're, they're cutting the middleman, they're finding a, um, uh, a way to bring furniture directly to its consumer, because buying furniture is very hard. Yeah, not easy. We it's, all know from personal experiences. And, and you know, this is something, again, you'll learn about this company. And like we said in the headline, right, to disrupt an industry, they're gonna cut the middleman, but also yeah. looking for a way to find a market that people haven't on tap, but they need to be served this yeah. type of product, right? So it's That's a solution it. that, they, uh, by that cutting, they provided. By cutting the middleman, really what they did well is they were able to lower the cost uh, of making the goods, and basically they provide more value to its customers because they offered quality furniture at a lower price. Uh, just like we always talk about with almost every brand we now do. Is there any other context we could add before getting to? No, I think let's jump right into it. Awesome. Let's Number one, create a distinctive look. Made.com, actually, I'm going to see Made.com because that's their social handles, majority of it. Made, create a distinctive look almost by accident while they're quote unquote bootstrapping. Their lifestyle shots consist of their furniture being in a white space. Now, we discussed this uh, multiple, uh, multiple times, so pack is where, you know, you want your images, your products be more of a lifestyle type of shot, of course, right? Yep. However, what they, I mean, they couldn't do that. They couldn't afford it. And it's very expensive, especially for these photo shoots. So their look is now their furniture in a white space, in a white studio. However, they needed a way for their products to look like how they're going to, uh, how they scale, how they, like like in, how real their life. Size, in yeah. real life. So they incorporated a model in their photos um, and that became their whole look. So now when people see the furniture in a white space, they immediately think, oh, that's from made. So providing that, that branding aspect, you know, people do this with audio branding. I know Gary Vaynerchuk used to uh, talked about this uh, about a year and a half ago, like some of his videos, you go about it, there's like the sound, if you guys know Gary Vaynerchuk, huge entrepreneur, which is when you recognize, when you see something, you hear something, you automatically think of that brand. So incorporating yep. that type of strategy is really important. Uh, made, obviously, did that with their type of look. So if you can do that, create a distinctive look. I think that's really important. That's what the big brand. brands do here in, here in the US. Think about like Target or Target, anytime you see a dart or a dartboard with the red circles, you think Target. Obviously. Yep. Uh, Walmart with a price cutter, the little guy. Coca-Cola with polar bears. I mean, you can go on and bear go Bear burger on. with their bear logo. You could be being by with their logo. Barrel with a cowboy. Like. Or the color. Your color aesthetic, color. your branding is very exactly. important. That should also feed into your social media, your marketing, your email efforts, Everything. and so forth. So, you know, branding is very important to become a recognizable business. Absolutely. Uh, number two, make your customers your media campaign. And this is something that they did very well, made.com. They basically had a hashtag called made design. And then they also designs about 24,000 people, at least on Instagram, that posted using that hashtag. So a lot bunch of, of user generated content. Obviously, you're gonna get a lot of people spam on it, but you'll see a lot of people actually incorporating their products using that hashtag and so forth. Yeah, I think the campaign was called Design Your Happy Place. And basically what they asked their customers to do is if they ordered a made.com furniture piece, it's really show us 
take a video of, of the product in your space or show me how you develop the room or somewhere that you enjoy or you love and show us that, including our furniture and, this and is, then tag design, uh, made design. So this is huge, right? So now they're, the ability of incorporating these UGC content into their product pages yep. is huge, right? People buy based on, look, if they're saying, if you have a product page and you just have mock-ups or just product shots without seeing real life people using your product, it doesn't build that trust. Now, however, I think you have a statistic, right? Statistic, here we go. I think it was 94% of people gave more credibility or uh, were more inclined to work with a company when they saw UCG user Generated, generated content. content for those of you that don't know were more, more likely to purchase or at least look into a company that showed actual like of items in real life by other consumers and things like that rather than just they say a, a piece of furniture in a white screen with a model so we talk about this all the time but we talk about it actually just posting it on your you know instagram channels and so yep. forth but they pull it into their their website so I believe in 2014, they tried to create this platform called Unboxed. I don't see that anymore. Now they're using a third party platform. It starts with an OP something. You can see their shop, uh, their Instagram look. Um, Curly is another third party platform. It basically helps them pull in these images um, through the hashtag yep. and then match to the actual product itself. So there's a third party providers out there that could do it. Obviously it could be very expensive. You could do it yourself as well, where again, you click on the image, let's show you the, user, the user's handle, right? So you could go actually to the user's page to yep. see it's actual a person and you could shop the look. It could be a whole completely room, their room with your product in it. Um, just for home decor basis. Of course, and um, you, don't, you don't have to be a big business to do this, guys. You can be a small business. If you can get your customers to basically hashtag your business or your location, you are then reaching all of their followers as well, and that just starts reciprocating. I mean, they went all out, and they literally 24,000 people, influencers, they posted the amount and number of people that they probably reached um, with their furniture, and then obviously maybe they didn't buy at that time, but maybe a month down the road they needed a lamp, and they thought, oh, made.com. So it's not only about just the marketing and things like that. Reaching that amount of people, whether a small or big business, is huge and will pay long-term dividends for you. More money in your pocket and for your business. Number three, leverage Instagram guides. Now, if you're a disrupting industry and your product is the same as everyone else, you gotta do some things that are new, and especially if features like Instagram guides is something new, and that I think it came out uh, Just probably, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it I'm came out sure what late it, 2020, what is, about it? December. What is Instagram so guides? it's another feature, and you go on Instagram page, you'll see uh, where the reels are and the IGTV is, mm -hmm. there's this book thing, it looks like a book. You might not see that, you gotta set it up in your settings, in actually in your mobile phone, where you could create, um, you could post, uh, I don't know if it's the settings or you click the plus button to post something and you see guide. Um, so basically what they're doing, what Made is doing, is they're either creating new content or I've seen they repurpose old content, their blog content, into an Instagram guide. So let's say if it's like, uh, I have this example here where they use this feature for one, one of their, their guides is now trending, pink plastered walls. So this is a blog article on their site. They also repurpose that into their Instagram guide. So let's say if you have that blog ar article, mm -hmm. right? But if you're on just on Instagram, you didn't see that guide. Now you're, you're just on Instagram seeing their page. You're providing more value. And then on top of that, you could add other people's posts that contain your product into the guide. So again, this is just another form of blog creation on Instagram where people shop your look using your product. Again, providing more value. So Instagram, Again, now it has the ability, it's becoming a, a more of a, more just not just like an Insta post, now it's becoming a whole new platform, like a whole platform to do everything. Shopping, writing your blog content, so you don't ever have to leave Instagram. So that's what's becoming. Live so Live again, Instagram. Made is uh, leveraging that. A lot of the home decor accounts that I know hasn't been really taking notice of this feature. I mean, again, it takes a lot of work, but if you want to disrupt, if you want to create noise, you got to try all these new things. You got to go on TikToks when it, like, TikTok was like popping. Yep. You got to just do these things Real to stand out everything. and to open yourself to uh, the market. That's a good point. I think we're on number four. Reward your employees. Guys, I know it sounds obvious, 
but in it's not really, obvious. It's, it's huge. It's, you want to grow and reward your employees. Yeah. I see Have so incentive. many businesses not incentivizing their employees and just kind of thinking about the business overall. And why I bring this point up is made.com or made at the end of December of 2020, really after COVID is they rewarded all 650 of their employees with stock options that basically vested uh, over the next couple of years that are worth $10,000. So it doesn't seem like anything extraordinary, but there's so many ways that if you really want to grow your business, especially as a smaller business, you need to reward the people that work for you. And this is just one way to do it either. I mean, if you're a bigger company through stock options, but even if you're a small business owner, say you have a great manager um, and it's a one location restaurant or a one location shop, maybe rewarding that manager with a 1% equity stake or possibly giving them a salary, but giving them certain metrics to make a bonus or a monthly commission amount so that they can perform. All these things are, are really key items or ways that you can formulate or think of to make the people that are working for with you more incentivized and more inclusive with your company. You want your employees to feel like they're part of the company. That Absolutely. You're growing, they're growing as well. So when they know that, they're gonna do a lot more for you. So you gotta provide those incentives up front or maybe reward them um, on, a, on a quarterly or a yearly basis. So they feel like they, you know, hey, look, you performed really well, uh, Jack, right? Let, yep. let, you done this, this, and this. I'm gonna give you this much bonus. And on top of that, I'm gonna pay for a vacation for you and your wife to go down this, blah, blah, blah. Yep. Right? That's huge, right? And but you're gonna get, we're gonna get lots of haters, Sean, but why would I do that? You're taking money of my bottom line, like you're taking money in my pocket. They, they helped you get there. Now, you not won't have that. a business without that. your employees or your customers. Those are your two most important people, your employees and your customers, not you. That's the most important thing. You gotta focus on those two, yep. those two aspects in order to scale. We've seen this a lot of times with all these brands. They're really a brand that doesn't, when a CEO doesn't really focus on their employees, you'll see that company collapse. Yep. Um, and the reason for those people that say, why would I take money out of my pockets and pay someone else? Because by you incentivizing them, the amount of revenue that they're actually gonna grow your business by is going to make you more money than if you didn't care about that employee. I guarantee it, I've heard it from so many people, incentivize your employees to work harder, to do make more money, to work harder for your business, and make sure they're adequately commissioned. And in the long run, you will make more money than if you did not do that. Got it. Number five, <laughs> create branded creatives on Pinterest, maids, Pinterest, when you go on their Pinterest website, they actually leverage Pinterest very effectively. Uh, and one of the avenues they do is you'll see a lot of their user-generated content. They'll pull it in. They'll also rebrand it. They'll create a, like a, the, the size for it. They'll put the UGC, user-generated content, into an image where it contains their watermark. You'll see made. Um, it's like a, a template where you see the user-generated content, and then it directs them to the website of the brand. Now, it's very clean. You'll notice when you see it, so when people are like searching like Pinterest, looking for um, you know some sort of Stylish home goods, they'll lamps, see right away, lamps. made. They won't just see another room shot. They'll see it, for, it's from made. Now that's not all their pins, but majority of their pins are like that. In addition, you'll see, and it's a little bit off the headline, but on their Pinterest page, they use their, their, what's it called? Their boards very effectively. They have thumbnails for each one that stand out. So the aesthetic, it's very aesthetically appealing. They also optimize their titles in such a way for what people are searching for. So remember That's what big. Pinterest is, people are looking for inspiration. So you gotta realize that, and especially for home stuff, right? For home goods or for uh, rugs, furniture, so forth, you're always looking for inspiration ideas. So think about what people are searching for, create the content for it, so it redirects back to your website to the actual landing page of what they are searching for. Yep, exactly. Uh, number six, think virtual reality. Uh, so this one is a little bit interesting. So made.com has an awesome kind of part of their website that they launched at the end of 2019, which it's almost a apartment, a four room apartment that they basically created above their warehouse in Europe. And basically as a customer, what you can do is you can go into the apartment and take a virtual tour of all the different apartment and all the different, different furniture items, lamps, mirrors, uh, couches, anything and basically click on it, uh, learn about who the artist, artist is, see the details of why it was created, and the, then links you back into the made.com site. So for your business, uh, 
I think be aware of virtual reality. We've seen it with Warby Parker trying on the glasses. You can do it virtually, put the glasses. Uh, we've seen it with other furniture companies and, and paint companies and rug companies where you can take a picture of your room with your camera or pull up your camera and it will place the rug or the painting or the piece of furniture in your room. So uh, I'm not sure what your business is, but this is a new movement, especially as we get away from retail locations and four wall locations with e-commerce, you're going to need to bring consumers into, introduce them to your products into their setting. They're not gonna be able to walk into your store anymore and see it in live. So you have to be creative in showing them the products in an atmosphere that is gonna get them to be comfortable with buying. That's the key and that is how Made did it. And by the way, that strategy, obviously thinking VR could be very expensive. Now you're gonna think about how to bring customers into real life as if they are at your store looking at the furniture or their, their, whatever they're at the, their showroom without actually being in a showroom, yep. right? But made.com entered that noisy environment. A saturated, they, their product is nothing special, yep. right? But they have to implement these strategies in, in order to disrupt or to you know to generate yep. revenue to create their brand new brand. I mean, they're ten years old, but especially with COVID. I mean, they, everyone keeps on saying it. COVID basically sped up a four or five year period of what was going to happen with e-commerce basically into a one year, into 2020. So there's numerous strategies, virtual reality. There's a new big one in Europe too. I don't know if it's big or how new it is. It's called uh, See Now, Buy Now. It's really with when you launch new products, think about fashion company. They used to have a runway and then about six to six months to a year later, they used to introduce their product. Now it's, hey, a lot of these companies are doing it. Well, they'll do a fashion runway or basically what Made does is introduce you to a product and then you could buy it on the spot because usually consumers don't wait six months to buy it. Like they'll, they'll just forget about it or move on. So another alternative as well, um, I might have to do this with, by the way, with Reborn, my brand, I haven't done this. This is a very expensive route. It's something I should work really well for my brand. So even though we're telling this strategy, it's something I get it. It's expensive, but that's why we're saying think VR because that is the future yep. with Facebook, with the Oculus glasses, with everything. Everything's going that way. Obviously it's gonna become more affordable in the future future, but just thinking of the strategy, just being ready for when it's, when it could happen for your brand is very important and how you could do it. So there's these, um, it, it's not like considered VR, but if your product, if you think it'll be benefit for the customer to do like a 360, you don't ever see those like product shots where you actually like, course, yeah, you, you just can... move around the product. You can see all around the whole 360. Yep. If you could do that, it's more affordable. There's these companies that do it. Just Google it that you're still giving that. It's not a VR feel, but it's that it's still a more of a it's how to the feel 3D, the product. Yeah, of course. It gives you them more comfortable, com being more comfortable with the product and, and buying it with, from you. So. Is that it? That's all. Awesome, guys. I hope you like this episode. Again, this is episode 36. 36. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, give the thumbs up button. Subscribe for more weekly videos. If you are listening to this iTunes, Spotify, or Amazon, uh, give us a review. That We would really appreciate it. Give it a five-star review if you liked it. Uh, share this with your friends, your entrepreneurs that would benefit from this uh, podcast. If you have any questions, you could tweet at mscopac or at Sean underscore Azari. Or if again, you're listening to this on YouTube, you could put your questions in the comments, comments below. below. And we'll see you next week. Next week. Ciao. Yeah,